Gotcha. The Iceborne expansion is just around the corner for players on the PC who are still playing the base game. Or you might have clicked this video because you just purchased Monster Hunter World the base game and you're getting ready to move over to Iceborne. What are the major changes between the base game and Iceborne? What should you know when you're starting Iceborne? These are the tips I wish somebody had told me when I was starting Iceborne for the first time. And lucky for you, I'm here to share those with you today. Tip number one, of course, is going to be about the Clutch Claw. This is the new mechanic that Capcom couldn't stop telling us about because it's a big change to the game, really it is. It's this sort of short range grappling hook that allows you to latch onto monsters just like you can latch onto monsters with this switch axe. It plays by the same rules. You're gonna get knocked off when the monster roars. You're gonna get knocked off when the monster, you know, uses an attack that uh, involves the hitbox of the area that you've grabbed onto. There's a whole bunch of things you can do with the Clutch Claw and I wanna cover those really quickly. First and foremost, probably the most important thing is when you actually use a weapon attack after Clutch Clawing, you're going to soften a monster's hide and this actually interacts with the skill weakness exploit. If you've played the game already a little bit, you know that weakness exploit is a very important skill for damage. It pairs with crit eye, it pairs with crit boost, handicraft, and master's touch to allow you to deal a lot more damage with most weapons. There are exceptions like explosive damage, of course, or maybe bows, right? Well, even bows use weakness exploit and, and crit element. So weakness exploit is very important and it goes from 30% affinity on a monster's body part to 50% affinity on a softened body part when you soften a body part with Clutch Claw. So this is the number one use of Clutch Claw is softening parts. But that's not the only use. The other thing you do is you flinch shot with the Clutch Claw, okay? So you take the Slinger Pod ammo that you have and you're going to jump to the monster's head, okay? So you just use your joystick to move around while you're grabbed onto the monster. And then you throw the monster into a wall by clicking right trigger. This will consume your pods and the monster will hit the wall, land over on its side, and you get a free knockdown at plus the damage from the actual flinch shot and the actual impact with the wall. You can do this, you can throw two monsters into each other. And after you've used a flinch shot, the monster will quickly become agitated. What's interesting, if you're very careful, if you're skilled at this, you can flinch shot a monster twice before they become agitated. When they become agitated, this little U that you can see next to the monster on the minimap, it will become uh, red. It used to be yellow, but now it's red, and that means he's agitated. It also well, it means he's enraged. It also means that you can't flinch shot him into a wall anymore until he's no longer enraged. It takes a little while for him to cool down, and usually the monsters are more aggressive when they're enraged, so be prepared for the fight to be a little trickier. Okay, another tip, if you're going to be double flint shotting a monster into a wall, it's nice to have some pods nearby that you can pick up after the first flint shot so that you can load them and get the second flint shot. Of course, Capcom eventually gives you an update to the game where if you have the a slinger capacity skill on when you use a flint shot you should have some leftover pods anyways so you don't even have to pick up more pods for the second flint shot you should have some left over and you can just flint shot him right away when he stands up which is the best way to get a double flint shot double flint shotting a monster is a key skill you have to learn this i'm not saying you should learn it i'm saying you have to learn it somebody on your team has to double flint shot it really makes a big difference in your fight you're talking about two knockdowns all the damage from the actual wall impact and all the time they spend on the ground not moving around not to mention once they go into agitation the agitator skill is going to activate giving your team more damage because if your teammates brought the agitator skill you know they get a damage boost they get an affinity boost so this is a critical skill that's why it's on the top of my list of things you should know another trick with the clutch claw is that you should probably know that when you grab onto a monster you're given the option between a weapon attack and a claw attack Although the claw attack doesn't really do a lot of damage, if you use it enough times, it will actually soften a monster's body part. One last claw tip, you will probably be bringing the glider mantle with you a lot more often in Iceborne, and we'll probably talk about that later in this list. But one of the things that you'll note is you can grab onto the side of a monster with the glider mantle, hop off of the monster without attacking it, and then your glider mantle will actually activate and you'll start floating away. Well, you can turn that into an aerial attack and this will eventually give you a mount, especially if you haven't gotten a mount already on the monster. Tip number two, monsters have a new crowd control status and it's going to be the drooling status. When a monster is drooling, you can use your clutch claw to grab onto the monster and soften up a monster's body part. So once again, 
Clutch Claws being used so that you get the bonus affinity from Weakness Exploit, plus you're improving the hit zones on the monster, so you're getting more damage when you hit them anyways. Uh, and yeah, when the monster is drooling, go ahead and grab onto them. If the monster is already softened, you can just use it as an opportunity to do more damage. It's a really nice, new, powerful uh, crowd control opportunity that players get that they didn't used to have in the past in the base game. Tip number three, this really is a beginner's guide for those of you who are watching and going, I know all this already. Well, for those of you who are really just starting Iceborne, there's a brand new level of decoration. This is the giant decoration, and they're kind of tricky, actually, because there's quite a few of them, and you can actually get better and better versions of them. So, for example, there's actually an agitator giant decoration that gives you two levels of agitator. It's really important. So understanding the giant decorations and what's available is going to be very important for you to understand what you could potentially build what you could potentially be using those slots for they really affect the efficiency of armor sets these days but it's hard to unlock all of those giant decorations just be aware that they're really powerful and you should keep your eyes open for particular decorations like the expert decoration that gives you two levels of expert the agitator decoration that gives you two levels of agitator and there's a whole lot more giant decorations. Tip number four. When Iceborne lands, a number of things are going to be nerfed. Maximum Might is probably one of the most nerfed skills in the game. That's because the way it used to work is the moment your stamina is full, you get a big boost to your affinity. Now the way it works is your stamina has to stay full for a while before you get the boost, which effectively only makes it work with a few weapons, kind of like the bow guns. It's probably one of the best example, but actually I also think it's not too bad with the, uh, the longsword. I think the longsword actually makes fair use of it. A temporal mantle received a really large nerf as well. It used to work so that you were on a timer and it could activate as many times as you want. Now the timer lasts a little longer. However, if temporal mantle actually activates, the duration of the temporal mantle timer shortens dramatically. So you only get a few flips out of the temporal mantle. This drastically nerfs it. Uh, another thing that changed, stun damage. So it used to be that a monster would become KO'd, and while the monster was KO'd, you could build the next level of KO, the next KO proc. This was a big deal for sticky ammo. This was a big deal for hammers. This no longer works. When a monster is KO'd, they do not receive any more KO damage. However, hammer stun and hunting horn stun, from what I understand, was buffed. Sticky ammo was buffed, but it was more like a damage buff. I don't think the stun... Was the stun on the sticky ammo? I don't think it was buffed, right? Somebody remind me of that one. <laughs> Another thing that was nerfed was cluster bomb reserve ammo. You really can't hold as much cluster bomb reserve ammo as you used to. This was a big deal in the base game because for a lot of monsters, you could just go in with your temporal mantle that could flip as many times as it wanted to flip, and then you would go in with all your cluster bombs, and you would just melt down any monster you wanted with your cluster bomb ammo. Now, cluster bombs aren't entirely nerfed because, let's move on to tip number five, let's talk about the things that have been buffed. You have something called True Spare Shot in Iceborne. Now, True Spare Shot's an improved version of Spare Shot, and this actually pairs with the cluster bombs so that even though you have less reserve ammo, you kind of make up for it with True Spare Shot. But, uh, you know, I still feel like you end up relying a little on sticky ammo, a little bit on the wyvern ammo more than you used to in the base game. And especially the temporal mantle nerf continues to really affect what you can get away with with the cluster bombs. Another thing, I, I think I already mentioned it in the nerf section, the sticky ammo was actually buffed. It does more damage per shot, and we find that sticky ammo kind of replaces cluster bomb ammo as the new easiest ammo to use in Iceborne. So if you're looking to sort of cheese a monster, you're going to be looking at a probably Magda Gameta setup where you just spam sticky ammo or a light bow gun setup that also uses sticky ammo. I don't want to ruin what monsters are in Iceborne, so I don't want to mention any names of the actual bow guns. More things that got buffed. We mentioned Agitator Activates after you flint shotted a monster twice or you flint shotted them once poorly. <laughs> Uh, anyways, Agitator activates when the monster is enraged, and because of our ability to flint shot and force enragement out of monsters, the Agitator skill kind of replaces attack boost a little bit. It kind of replaces maximum uh, might as well on your build in terms of build priority, especially if you have those giant decorations that allow two levels of Agitator, but also the Agitator charm, which gives you four levels of Agitator, is kind of nice as well. Okay, so, you know, it's, it's interesting because it has... Uh, 
sort of the efficiency of like weakness exploit you know, it was hard to, it's hard to explain you, you would have to really analyze the decorations for me to explain it to you well i won't do that to you in this video we'll save that for another video the airborne mantle was upgraded to hold two giant decorations that's a big deal because it actually lasts a long time airborne mantle it doesn't expire very quickly and when it does it kind of comes back pretty fast as well so a lot of experts will bring the airborne mantle and maybe something like the evade mantle or the temporal mantle which you know because it's still kind of strong it's still one of your best choices for the mantles tip number six the defensive skills have gotten even better primarily i'm talking about two tool specialist secret and divine blessing secret either of these set bonus skills are going to be crazy strong so if you want to go into a fight and have a strong chance of surviving it health boost plus either tool specialist secret or divine blessing secret is going to add a lot of survivability to your character with tool specialist secret you can have something like i don't know the uh, temporal mantle and maybe the rock steady mantle or the health booster and you can just constantly have those available all the time they just you know when they're not available just play kind of safe and then shortly afterwards they become available because the recharge time on them is shortened by so much uh, whereas over th with the divine blessing you just it procs all the time and it's damage reduction by a fractional amount which is really powerful in video games because it cuts uh, maybe a large number in half so if a monster was going to deal 200 damage to you now it deals 100 damage to you because of 50 percent damage reduction which is really powerful okay so yeah, de defensive skills. In the past, it was hard to justify taking them because they weren't always that efficient in your armor sets. And then it was kind of like, you know, you could have defense or you could have more offense. And most people wanted to have more offense. Well, now in Monster Hunter World Iceborne, it feels like the sacrifice of extra damage you would have been dealing is more justified by all of the defense that you receive because defense has been buffed. And it's not just tool specialist. It's not just uh, Divine Blessing Seeker. A number of other skills were buffed as well, like... Uh, all the resistances uh, for the ailments, the stun resistance was buffed, heroics was buffed. So a number of defensive skills were, uh, the defense boost skill was even buffed. So a lot of the defensive skills were actually buffed, but those two in particular are really strong. Tool Specialist Secret, Divine Blessing Secret. Tip number seven is a tip I talk about all the time. Some charms have gotten really strong, and the nice thing about charms is you can go and build them. You don't rely on RNG decorations to fall into your lap. You can just go build these charms. Go build the handicraft charm, the ammo up charm, the agitator charm, the resentment charm, the spare shot charm, which you get as a quest, an optional quest from the housekeeping cat after you do a few quests for him. Uh, that's now a charm. All the elemental damage boost charms, if you intend to use elemental damage weapons. You know, if you're using like a great sword, you probably don't need them. Uh, the guard charm now gives you all five levels of guard. And same with wide range. It also gives you all five levels of wide range. Tip number eight is pretty amazing. You can now stack more lives into your runs if you know how to do it. So at the canteen, you have a daily food skill that is randomly given to you as an opportunity to eat for called feline insurance. If you get feline insurance, use a voucher so that you definitely get it. The other skill, feline safeguard, is actually a feline food skill that you can choose to eat for if you have the ingredients. On screen, you can see what you have to eat for feline safeguard. If you don't have all the ingredients, get yourself into a session with other players because when you're in a session, everyone shares ingredients so that you can definitely eat feline safeguard while you're playing. Finally, your Palico's Vigor Wasp Spray now has an upgrade to it where if you we're supposed to die, your cat flies over you and revives you for an extra life. That's a total of three extra lives. Feline insurance stacked on top of feline safeguard with your Palico Vigor Wasp Spray if you're playing by yourself or you're playing with your friend. I consider tip number nine very important, but it's not always a, it's something that you appreciate quite so much. The Botanical Research Center can be upgraded for a fourth slot. Uh, now, this allows you to grow more of the material that you're trying to grow faster, right? Each time you return from a quest, instead of getting three, you'll get four. That's kind of a big deal, actually. And of course, what you're growing at the research center is probably like max potions, mega potions. That means honey, bitter bug, uh, mandragora, I can't remember it all, blue mushroom. <laughs> all the normal edible ingredients you need to craft, all the things you need to survive. Item loadouts, of course, and items are very important to your level of power in the game. You want to be powerful, have all the good items, and have good item loadouts so that you can use them use them easily okay so unlocking the next level of the botanical research center it's definitely going to be an optional quest so the moment an exclamation mark pops up over that guy's head and you talk to him and he's like oh man i got a little quest for you just run off and do the quest 
don't wait, just go get it done because, you know, getting your botanical research center upgraded should be a priority for you. The other thing about it is you can now craft dung pods at the botanical research center. I don't remember if you have to do an optional quest for that one, but this is also useful because in Iceborne you run into other monsters all the time it's super annoying and if you bring dung pods into your item loadout you can now get rid of those monsters and i highly recommend that is what i do because there are so many monster turf wars and they just really interrupt the flow of your fight tip number 10 is all about how you should be spending your time i don't want you to waste too much time crafting weapons and armor that you don't need and that are about to become obsolete okay so this tip is all about not wasting your time building stuff Get one solid build, probably for raw damage, run through the story as fast as you can. Get your friends to help you, send out SOS flares, whatever it is you got to do, right? Use fortify so that if you die, you come back really strong, you have a high defense, you have a high attack, and then just defeat the boss of the story. And what will happen is after you've defeated the boss, his weapons become available. And when his weapons become available, for a lot of weapon classes, this becomes your best choice of a weapon. Now that's not true 100% of the time. If you're talking about maybe like the hammer, the hunting horn, and the uh, greatsword, you can jump straight over to Acidic Glavinus. Acidic Glavinus and Master's Touch is going to be really powerful for you. Of course, if you don't have Master's Touch yet, which you probably don't, then you don't want the Acidic Glavinus weapons yet. You want the bosses, uh, you know, the storyline bosses weapon. So his weapons are really important. Rush straight through the story if you want to become powerful fast, get the storyline done, and then you begin the post-game grind. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about who the boss is. I don't want to spoil anything for you guys. Let's go ahead and end this list with a bonus tip. So for the bonus tip, I want to talk about the wish list mechanic. This is a mechanic that you get with the smithy, where if there's something you need to craft, you can add it to your wish list. This is something I really didn't master until Iceborne, because in the base game, I just kind of flopped around and built everything, not really knowing what I should be doing. I spent a lot of time in the base game. I'm a lot more efficient in Iceborne and only focused on the things that were really valuable. Once you know what you should be building, add it to the wish list, and this will tell you exactly what you need to craft it. And then if you happen to pick up those materials while you're working your way through the storyline, it will actually tell you to go upgrade the item. Also, the, another useful aspect of the wish list is you can actually access the wish list from your uh, menu, and this will allow you to look at what particular materials are needed for crafting the item that you need. So you can then go off to an optional quest or an investigation to get those particular parts, which is really useful, okay? All right, let's go ahead and wrap things up. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.